There we go. Um, Sprayden Kashmir Community Board. Tato. We have um, one part A, um, and that's the Kashmir Worsley's intersection. This isn't this isn't one that um, uh, this is that wasn't without its complications. But in the end, the staff did a really good job of consulting with the community, um, and the discussions were open and fair. A lot of stuff was explained. And in the end, there was general acceptance from the community and unanimity on the board. You want to move that, Leanne, or should I leave it to well, later? Yeah, OK. So, um, Tim, you'd like to move it? And seconded by Phil. Is there any discussion on it? I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Well done. Thank you. Good work. Now to your report. Associated with that, there is... Um, Discussions around the link, a link, a back link road, um, be between Westmoreland and Craycroft, which both residents associations, as we have heard so far, not formally but informally, both residents associations are opposed to, and that discussion will continue. Um, this morning, out with my dog, in the sprinkle of rain. Um, I thought about the letter that was in the paper the other day talking about the long grass around the rivers being allowed to grow and the benefits that were perceived by the staff ecologically for the river in terms of the health of the river and the life of the river, preventing flooding and so on. But this person also mentioned the fact that the long grass caught the rubbish going into the river, which I had actually never thought of. And this morning, behind um, Pioneer Stadium on Centennial Park, where there are no fast food outlets and um, not even a dairy within Kui, um, walking with my dog, looking at a pristine park that looked as though there was no rubbish, I picked up 68 individual bits of crap in 200 metres. Mm. And, um, and it was all trapped by the long grass. And this, so this didn't end up in the river. And I'm, I'm not easy walking on the slope, so there were some bits I actually couldn't get to. And that was in a pristine area with no fast food. And if that um, didn't get into the river and was saved from getting into the river, and I discussed it with Leanne before, and she said she'd done the same thing about in another place and found the stuff that was not getting into the river. So there's a whole bunch of reasons for that long grass, and we on our board are very much in support of it. I've passed around the Addington News. I del yes, which is right there. It's a wonderful newspaper, and I don't think Doreen will mind if I say roughly her age, because no one actually knows, but I think she's mid to late 80s, the editor of that, and she's exceptional. She goes out and ta she takes a lot of the photographs herself, she writes most of the notes, and she um, is very interested in the history of the area and talks to the people about it. And if you look at that newsletter, it's chock full of stuff. It's absolutely full of stuff. Now, and I'm one of the deliverers, which means I walk around Addington delivering. And just for example, at the back of the Addington Little uh, Mall um, in Fielding Street, there is a just opened, or just bought and opened, so they, they, they were sold within a week, uh, four units on a small section, uh, townhouses built above spec, um, I met the developer because I complained to him about him not having a post box and he gently pointed it out to me. Um, and he built them and he said he deliberately does it above spec and I interviewed someone who'd just taken residence the day before and they'd been looking for a house. They, 
she worked at the hospital and he worked at Canterbury University and they were looking initially for a house with a section. They were delighted to get a townhouse which was above spec, especially in terms of insulation. And this was a architecturally quirky designed boiled building where the backyard, the garages were built so that the residents had to talk to one another. There was no backing into children because they designed it that way. Um, small townhouses that didn't intrude on their neighbours because our area in particular has got the development in Bolton Street and the development in Studham Street, both of which are completely unacceptable, unacceptable ghettos of the future, horrible, horrible buildings. And so intensive housing can be done and Addington is proof of it. Um, and also on the adjacent um, street are six workers' cottages, all of which have just finished being done up, two or three of which have been sold, the, and one of them was Mike Peters, a stalwart of our area, and that has just been finished being done up as well. Um, I want to say that you actually fund us. Oh, we actually fund us. Sorry, the Addington Times, we help fund. I also have got the, com um, the community board plan and the community board pamphlet, which is about it talks to us about what we say. I wish you could see this. This is the invitation to our Christmas party, which was held the other night. And um, this is a kia with a pahutakawa in its mouth, or it could be taken for a southern rata. And that was done by one of our staff, Annette Wilson, who's creative, not the only creative one either. She did this by a hand drawing and had it printed off for our invitation. And she does things like that every year. And I wish you could see that. And we had a lovely occasion, as we always do. Don't look at the photographs. The, if I'd known that there were three <laughs> photographs where a slim staff member was between two... <laughs> my, and I'm always... Um, this is the fourth year of we, wearing this out, outfit. It's got a serious intention. We have a, de we have a desk every year and we consult with the Addington community and beyond about what they think of. And at the moment, we've got a serious discussion going about Lincoln Road. And you can see the paperwork there. Um, and that was that was Jay standing, <laughs> slim Jay, standing between us two extremely well-built young women. And um, uh, there she is. Oh, God. Anyway, I'm, not, I'm going to ban photographs like that for next year. This is the Addington Fair, which um, is always successful. It's outside St Mary's Church. We have a strong presence there. It's a lovely, it's just the loveliest of occasions. But one of the best things about it is it has the best music in the city. Um, David Mitchell, who's, uh, me who's a member of the Addington community, organises it with his old rocker mates, most of whom are still playing in bands and doing terrific music. And I, um, someone pointed out John Hoare Grinnell sitting on the side eating an ice cream, listening to his friends of old playing terrific music. But this is typical of the St Mary's Church, whom I'm going to discuss in a minute, that they host these every year and put so much energy into it. And it's just, it's just the best. It's the most beautiful environment. Um, significant issues. Uh, our board unanimously uh, supported a memorial plaque to Christina Loughton, and some of you will know her. She was a brave and stalwart member of our community who was much loved. And um, in our community, she fought very hard for buses. She loved buses. And she was a great woman. Um, before that, uh, she fought um, in other, it, she was always involved in community issues. She got the raised um, pedestrian crossing outside Community House on Hereford Street before the earthquake. She got that. Um, but also, she was a very staunch, um, giving, energetic, um, generous member of the transgender community for whom she had worked for 20 or 30 years before it was fashionable. And she under, underwent considerable discrimination in her life and she came out of it with kind, only kindness in her heart. And we have got a memorial plaque that we are putting on a bus stop in Athelston Street um, and we will be opening it with the, uh, in, uh, with the note there that says, in memory of Christina Loughton, 19 August, uh, 19 August 1938, 
to 31 December 2015, a brave and tireless worker for the good of others. Um, we, the bank stabilisation is now uh, is just about to get underway, and we um, we are meeting staff this afternoon to go in a van around the proposed e worst areas to discuss what they are doing in terms of stabilising the bank while at the same time furthering um, ecological issues such as Inanga. So, did I say that right? Um, my pronunciation is terrible. And um, uh, the um, banks of the rivers and the flora and fauna of our area. The um, drainage staff, as usual, have been exceptional and, um, uh, and always are terrific. And we will look, we look forward to the discussion this afternoon because there will be some ecological issues that won't be reconciled with the drainage team, because we know that some members of the community are worried about the bank stabilisation scheme, and so we are looking to have get some answers from the drainage team this afternoon, as well as looking at the worst areas in our ward. Um, uh, Hunhei Fiesta, the Hunhei Fiesta was, it, as usual, a great occasion, and it ran parallel, parallel with the Pacific okay, Rugby... Okay. It ran parallel with the Pacific Rugby League um, competitions that ran over Saturday and Sunday. Um, the Hunhei Fiesta, it was just fantastic. Um, these little kids, these are the, uh, our preschool kids from... Um, and they... The they, they were just fantastic, the way they... The, the way they sang and um, played with the poise and things like that. Um, Phil Clearwater judged, judged a talent uh, competition where the, where, the, where the talent was exceptional. He was a bit um, greedy. He also judged, judged the cake eating competition, which I thought was a bit selfish because I would have liked to have judged the cake eating competition because I know more about cake eating than lots of other people do. Um, <laughs> And I could have judged the finesse with which the dry cake was eaten uh, compared to the lack of finesse by some other people. Um, but we had a great time and a great day, and the Pacific um, Rugby League competition was excellent, and it ran on Saturday and Sunday, and there were people from all over Christchurch there to support their teams. Um, heritage, Addington, the St Mary's Church got a Heritage Ambassador Award for um, their recognition of their heritage contributions to the community. And they had an Addington Heritage Evening, which I wish I'd actually gone to. I didn't, I, it just passed me by for some reason. And it was talked about the construction and repairs of the Addington Water Tower. The Reverend Bean of St Mary's Church, who was married to the daughter of Prime Minister Richard John Seddon, doesn't get much more uh, royalty than that. And at the end, and this is typical of this church, they played a musical homage to the Beatles Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band, now 50 years old. Um, and then the Christchurch Adventure Park, of course, is being reopened, and we look forward to that. Thank you. Oh, Rowley! Oh, we haven't got the music for this. And Rowley School came to our Christmas um, uh, evening, a Christmas uh, farewell night before last, and sang. Now, I would challenge any one of you to um, tell me that they have a, a bunch of school kids in their wards that sing better than Rowley School, because they don't. <laughs> and this isn't hubris. I'm telling you the truth. There was no, there's no adult standing with these kids when they sing, and there are, and the kids also are the ones that play the guitar, and they are exceptional. It's just a pity that their derelict school isn't as pristine as they are. Thank you. Well, I think I think you've just challenged everyone to uh, sing off next year. Yeah, so, um, yeah, that would yeah. be great if it was in the council chambers. Yeah. It would be great. It would be. Uh, Phil. <laughs> Just two brief comments, if I may, Leanne. Um, Carolyn referred to Christina Lawton, and I, Car Carolyn has said this very eloquently, but she was a wonderful example of the little people who do so much for our community. The other thing I wanted to mention, 
uh, Carolyn also outlined the uh, the bank stabiliser stabilisation program for the Heathcote River, and along with the flood intervention policy, that is something that we as a council will really have to focus our minds on when it comes to the long term plan. So that those parts, as Carolyn has said, and is in the, the report, are just going to be so important. Right, um, Clean and then Pauline and then David. Thank you. I just wish to uh, second Phil's comments about uh, Christina. Uh, the Presbyterian Church recognises her uh, and that was a very difficult journey for her mm -hmm. and uh, so there's quite a piece in the whole register of ministers there uh, you know recognises her great work as a social justice advocate uh, the TPA had a, uh, a memorial service for her as well so she was really well it was really community happy. house really but it was great community eh? house. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah 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 Pauline Thanks, great presentation. I love your passion, mm -hmm. Carol. It was fantastic. Look, just going back to the riverbanks being unmowed, and I read that letter too, it's very poignant, and what you've got there is incredible. Now, I'm wondering if we could look at a piece of work where the council ceases to mow all the riverbanks, and this is just the banks going down to the water, not up where you walk, but just there where it filters the rubbish, and just mow the areas that we designate. But currently we do it the other way round. We're mowing all of it and we've got a trial where we're not mowing. And I think it would be environmentally more advantageous to us to actually do it the other way where we designate where we would like to mow right down to the water. And I'm happy well, if, that, if that was the uh, there's, there's no reason why the Land Drainage Recovery Programme or, or your committee couldn't generate that approach. I mean, um, parts of parts of it seem to be unmown completely and um yeah and that's know. not a good look when it well comes it's to not a good look there, and no. that's what i get more complaints yeah. about than anything else so, so i think we need to just look at that whole program and that that trial um well why don't you raise that at your committee and come back to the council in the new year with something because we'll um, something brought back yeah. rather and than, I saw rather it, um, than resolve something here some because photos from someone who actually was Anthony Wright at the at the museum and he'd just um, been overseas and some of the riverbanks over there, they're actually they're, they're unmown everywhere, but they've also interspersed them with wildflower plantings, and they look really nice. Yeah, they're not wild just flowers. grass. So, all right, I'll follow that up. <laughs> yeah, okay. Frankly, I don't care about the look. Yeah, uh, look, I was going to comment on the same subject, and it's been a, a subject of some ire for me for a number of years about the, the way we mow our riverbanks, and, and, and you know, great that... Um, you guys have collected so much rubbish in a short period, but leaving that grass there is just a, a, uh, an invitation for those that can't be bothered finding a rubbish tin to just chuck it in the long grass where it won't be seen. But um, you know, I've long held a view that it's very, it's extremely unsightly, and I actually put it down to our, and I've tried to argue this for years, our, when we are letting our contracts, we let our contracts to various um, uh, people and they have right on mowers and they're not capable of actually mowing to the rivers down the bank of it. If we insisted, and I've asked this for a number of years, that our, our, um, our river banks are mown with a boom operated mower that's able to reach out oh. and mow, and we don't need to mow every little bit, and I agree with Pauline, there are parts of river banks that need to be protected for ecological reasons. And I can think of one particular area um, close to the Avondale River Bridge, where it's, it's in an, a, I uh, oh, can't think of the Maori name, a white bait, an unga, an unga um, breeding ground. But there are literally hundreds of other areas that do not get mown properly because I believe we are not insisting in our contracts that they use an appropriate piece of machinery that is able to mow the riverbanks properly. And this has been ongoing for years now. When we let our contracts, we let it to a bunch of guys who have a fleet of ride-on mowers and they get so far to the riverbank and then the grass grows and it keeps coming out of it and their ride-on mowers won't get it. We've got to be more um, proficient in our in our mowing contracts of riverbanks and insistent that a particular piece of machinery is capable of mowing the bank properly uh, and then look grass grows up this high and then we spend literally thousands on gangs of guys with weed eaters that take weeks and weeks and weeks 
to go down our riverbanks and clean them all up. If we're looking for savings in the LTP, there's one that we could probably save tens of thousands of dollars. I disagree entirely with you, and that wasn't the message I intended yeah, to convey. But I didn't really oh, no. want to open no, no. up a debate, no, no. but no. you started it. No, and, yeah. No, you, I mean, you raised it at the beginning, and it, yeah, does, yeah. it does enable councillors, but if councillors could focus on short questions um, directed to the chair of the community board, that would be really helpful. Yanni. I was just going to suggest, well, I welcome it being picked up through Pauline's committee. I also think the local boards, like our board, is getting overwhelmed with complaints, and actually there's a huge fire risk that we have, and we need to get on top of I, it. I don't really want to start a debate no. about this, whether well, it's the, the individual the community boards or whether it's the, the, the um, ITI committee, it doesn't really matter. Somebody needs to um, be, be processing this, but I don't want it off the back of something that wasn't written in the report to be the basis for um, asking council staff to do another report just before Christmas. So, well, who's, who's making the uh, decision about whether we cut the grass or not? Can you, can, Yanni, can you just take it offline? Um, I think Carolyn was making a point in support of a letter to the editor the other day, but um, perhaps there's just a lesson to be learned here in terms of uh, what happens when we raise things that aren't on the written part of the report. It's very much associated with bank stabilisation, Leanne. I never waver. No. <laughs> All right. So um, now, did we, did we get a mover and a seconder for this? I think, yes, uh, Phil and Tim. I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. Those opposed Stop say no. Stop cackling, Phil. That's carried. <laughs>